Pugh. Pugh, that'll do it! That will do it! Pugh for Bournemouth! The roof of the gold sands is raised! Everyone here knows what that could mean to this football game! <laughs> Hello, good evening, Cherries fans. It was Bournemouth 1, Millwall 1 tonight at the Vitality. It was frustrating. And sometimes that frustration was because of our own mistakes and often it was because of the ref. But Millwall, who are a side that, let's face it, will never set the championship alight with flair, they certainly made up for it with some guile. And whilst they didn't exactly have to withstand a relentless storm of Cherry's attacks, who, let's be fair, we weren't completely at the races today. They probably did enough with their robust and well-organised team to secure a draw at Dean Court. I think JT will feel a little discontented with our play tonight, but where did it go wrong? Was it formations? Was it individual errors? Naivety? Let us know your thoughts. We would love to know. If you want to take part this evening, all you need to do is just grab some headphones and plug it into your device and then go to afcbpodcast.com slash take part. As soon as you do so, you'll enter the room and then I'll bring you in as quickly as possible. We'll get through as many fans as we can in the next hour or so. Throughout the show as well, I'll be flashing your messages on screen too. Therefore, if you want to just take part by typing, then feel free to do so. First person I'm going to bring on today is Morgan Scott. Morgan, how are you? One all against the Lions. Bit of a frustrating one, eh? Uh, yeah, firstly, Happy New Year. I haven't been on since, so Happy New Year to you, Sam, and everyone watching this evening. But um, in terms of the game, it it's very frustrating to take. Let me take a you know, um, I'm a tall lad. Um, in terms of the game, I think the first place we need to start this evening is with the referee, Tim Robertson. Now, Chris, um, people may have heard Chris Temple and uh, John William throughout commentary were talking about um, the last time he took game of a cherry side. And that was at, um, the Watford game back a few months ago. And Lloyd Caddy should have seen red. Um, tonight, he had a bit of a stinker. Um, we talk about VAR and not getting that penalty from Peter Banks. We're, we're now talking about Tim Robertson's performance tonight. Now, he could have sent two of the Millwall players that were on booking and they could have both been off. Um, the one that was, uh, I can't remember who it was, but the one on Lerma definitely was the second bookable offence by far. Um, they're all factors into the game. Um, we might have gone on and nicked it. You know, at 10 men, it's a different game. So I think that plays a massive factor tonight, Sam. And um, yeah, to be honest with you. And then the other thing to talk about is where was Sam Savage? I thought he could have, in the channels, I think he could have run in behind. I think Dom, again, although yes, he got a goal, people may argue, but I thought he looked quite isolated up against two massive centre-halves. Um, you know, I'm a tall lad of myself, but uh, Dom just looked a bit honest. He, he did quite well, to be fair. I think he did better than I thought. but. Um, yeah, very, very difficult for Dom this evening up there on his own. Brilliant. Yeah, nice to hear your opinion. Uh, we'll keep you on the line because we've got Chris Cook, uh, who's with us. He's from the AFC Bournemouth Sydney Supporters Club. So over there, it's early in the morning. It was a 6.45 start. Chris, how are you, mate? You all right? Good morning. Yeah, not too bad. It's 10 to 9 now, so heading to work shortly. Um, so it was an early morning uh, wake-up call as it is most times watching the Cherries live. But a um, bit of a frustrating game, if I'm honest, um, especially the referee's performance, as you've just all talked about. Um, just missed that little bit of spark just to get that goal, that second goal, or just to finish the, t the game off. But I think it's just, I don't know if we need to sign someone or what it is. There's something just lacking just to win those goals, that win those games, sorry, to make it those three points. Mm. Um, do you think Do you think Millwall uh, deserve a bit of credit for playing how they did or do you think we uh, almost gifted it to them somewhat? No, I think they're, they were a good team. They they played very well. I don't think it was us. I think it was them being a good team. Um, I think I've seen that they've taken points off Brentford and Norwich already this season. So they're, they're obviously a good team. Um, so I think they, they played very well and fair play to them. You know, they came, they defended well. 
uh, and they broke on the they attacked on the break and you know that goal you know it, you you got to give it to them they probably deserved the point um did we, we probably deserved maybe it would be nice to get three points and but did we deserve three points i don't think so i think one will take one but you know we always want to th- we always want three but it's just one of those one of those games just frustrating yeah very much so morgan you're about to say something it must be quite nice to be um i, I think chris are you in a pub or something yeah we're, it we're must be quite pub. nice <laughs> With the current um, situation with the pandemic, it must be quite nice. Um, I know Australia, I don't know too much, but it must be quite nice with um, England doing lockdown. So it must be quite nice to be watching a game with a few beers at a pub because many of us have been stuck in our own homes for quite some time now. <laughs> yeah, it is. We're very fortunate out here. I think we've got five cases in the whole of Australia right now. So wow. um, we're pretty fortunate to be able to be in pubs, you know, do everything pretty much normally there's no real restrictions um but yeah this morning we we don't really have beers in the pub um it's normally coffees because it's what time in the morning it is to keep us all keep us awake but yeah no it's good um you can probably probably see, oh, i'll quality. give you a better idea of where i am <laughs> oh that's amazing uh, it's that like, looks, it's like it a hurts. massive cinema uh, <laughs> yeah. and also with you going to, off to work i'm sure your boss wouldn't appreciate if you're off your face on your way <laughs> in this morning yeah and, no it's probably it's probably not advisable um so yeah the coffees are the safe bet and to keep us going all day so you know it's good the lads here they've been going since 2012 november 2012 um i've just recently moved out here so i'm fairly new to the group here but the boys have been going so long and fair play to them nick has set it up and he kept it going and the rest of the crew that come down here at whatever ghastly hour of the morning it is um they've done very well so is this uh, is this going to uh i mean i you know i can imagine when we lose it's it's pretty awful but how, how are you going to be feeling you know going into your work day now with a one all draw <laughs> at a match that we probably probably could have got three points from uh you know he, well, to be fair, the minute I walk outside and it's 25 degrees, that sort of takes a bit of the pain away. <laughs> yeah, um, wearing shorts and getting a suntan and no mask, well, not many masks around and no COVID, it's all right. But yeah, you know, it's, it's frustrating. Um, but yeah, never mind. We'll keep plowing away. Um, we've got Luton away, a uh, Luton at home on Saturday. Sadly, I think that's a 2 a.m. kickoff here or whatever time in the morning it is. So sadly, it won't be probably awake for that one unless I'm out on a big night out and stumble into a pub and uh, find a TV to watch it on. Could I just uh, ask? Chris, could I just ask Chris if you don't mind um, where your love for the cherry? Um, I think it's fantastic that we have supporters all around the world. We got Filippo in um, Italy. Um, we got uh, uh, David Cordell, um, our guard in France and the US. We got a various support of uh, Cherries fans around the world. And where did your love for the Cherries fall in part? Oh, well, I, I'm originally from Bournemouth. Um, so Brilliant. born and bred Paul Hospital um, and moved to London after university in Bristol. So but I've always followed the Bournemouth. Um, and yeah, I guess it's just home team. Um, always supported them. So um been haven't been able to go to many matches uh, due to being in London or being out in Bournemouth and not being a season ticket harder ticket holder makes it a lot harder. But um, yeah, always followed the cherries from a young age. I think my brother used to take me uh, when we were down in the South Stand um, back at the old Dean Court and then the new and in the new stand. So memories go back to oh, Mel Mitchin days uh, and Ooh. sort of watching the Neil Youngs, the Baileys, going to Wembley to watch the Grimsby in the Auto Windscreen Cup final. Great days. Uh, so, yeah, good memories. Been to, you know, went down to Millennium Stadium um, for that match. So, yeah, no, I've been a Bournemouth fan for, what, I'm now 35. Probably, well, I guess for my first memory would have been about eight years old, probably, something like that. So, good. 28 years, 27 years. So, Amazing. yeah. And now... The boys over here have done a great job at setting up this uh, supporters club here, which has been great for someone new to the city. Meet the boys, come and have a coffee with them before work. Um, so, yeah, no, it's good. And I'm pleased that 
I can carry on supporting them and watching them out here. Brilliant. Well, Chris, I really appreciate you coming on. Thanks so much. Enjoy your uh, work day. And uh, sorry, thanks, I wasn't the, uh, the best result, but nice to have you on. No worries. Cheers, boys. Have a Cheers. good evening. Thank you. Good thanks night. very much. Good night. So what we're going to do is bring in uh, Kirk Tovey, who uh, was watching the game. But also uh, we've got Neil here from That Millwall podcast, who was on the opposition preview uh, with Craig. Firstly, we'll come to Neil. Neil, one all. Um, not bad result for you guys. And probably probably about deserved i'd say yeah i think yeah i think we mugged you for a one one didn't we uh you had one chance and scored uh <laughs> yeah we yeah we had one chance and scored well yeah but i'm absolutely ecstatic to be honest uh yeah but the point was yeah but i think we'd have settled for a point before the game uh i think we hung on slightly in the first 10, 15 minutes, David Brooks, a couple of very good passes, a one very good run. Oh, in the alley, found the goalkeeper is beyond me. Mm. Yeah, I think it was easier to score, wasn't it? But then we grew into the game. I think Jed Wallace, he should have put us 1-0 up, but he found Begovic, didn't he? Mm. And then yeah, I thought it was fairly even, Stephen. It could have been anybody's game. Uh, oh. Yeah, well, you scored... Uh, probably at the right time for you, the wrong time for us, wasn't it? Just before half time. I think we were, yeah, I think we had the better of it until then. And then Solanke pops up. The goalkeeper should have done better. I think, I think, yeah, I think we got done. Hutchinson got caught for pace. Pierce got caught flat footed and Solanke, good striker. Yeah, but he only needed one chance and he scored. Yeah. I mean, you know, you look at the table and think, how on earth are you 17th based on what we saw today? But it seems to be that, you know, against the bigger sides or, OK, maybe the better sides, the teams at the top, you always seem to get results. But whereas teams, you know, sort of in and around you, you're, you know, you're not picking up as many point, uh, points. What's that all Mate, about? You saw a typical Millwall performance. We just can't create chances. Mm. And when we do create them, we can't score them. <laughs> yeah, but luckily Matt Smith came on us. I was calling on Twitter for some substitutes about 10 minutes earlier. I thought, yeah, well, I thought he'd actually left it a bit too late, to be honest with you. Oh. Yeah, then Big Smith comes on, gets in between, you yeah, know, gets on the end of a flick on, and it's 1-1. Oh. I mean, on the, you know, you look at that first half, and yeah, Dom Solanke scored uh, just before half time. Great time to score and all that. But you must have been having your head in your hands based on those chances that you had, of course. You know, Jed Wallace rushing through a goal, great save by Asmir, and then a header cleared off the line and shots blocked all, you know, like all over the place. On the balance of things, I mean, I don't know what the shots on target stats are looking like, but surely to God, Millwall would have been, you know, above us today. Mate, uh, yeah, when that, yeah, when that goal went in, I, yeah, we only have to look at my Twitter. I think I describe it as a clusterfuck because that's <laughs> what it was. I'm just, I was just absolutely devastated because you just thought, yeah, we thought, oh, yeah, yeah well, we're getting in. Yeah, we're nil nil. They've not caused us too many problems considering that you've got a bloody Premier League team, haven't you? I mm. think I said on your preview, apart from two or three players that you've left. Mm. And yeah, we thought, yeah, but they're not causing us any problems here. Then all of a sudden, bang, long ball down the middle. Uh, Hutchinson gets caught. Ball goes into the box. Solanke, he's quick off the mark. Pierce is caught flat-footed. And Bavardson doesn't cover his front. Or, so, yeah, Bierkowski doesn't actually cover his front post. Oh. And you say, oh, no, God almighty, shoot me now. <laughs> Everything is flying across the room. The remote control's gone across the room. The laptop's gone across the room. The iPad's gone across the room. And you just, and well, if I had a cat, the cat would have gone across the room as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, Kirk, um, you are at AFCB Gary Neville, but don't be fooled. The name is actually Kirk and you're our stats man. And you held your finger up there when I was wondering about how many shots did we have on target or even shots in general versus Millwalls. Do you know that information? Yeah. So 65 percent ball possession to 35 percent total shots, 15 for Millwall against our six two on target for us, six for Millwall. 
So, uh, you know, in Kirk, how do you analyse that one? Um, you know, as a Bournemouth fan, hugely frustrated with our performance tonight. Formation, again, did we need to play five defenders in a game like this when Mill had no interest in actually uh, pressing us? They were quite happy to sit 20 yards off us. In that 65% possession, I'd love to know how much of that possession was eaten up by our five, our three centre-backs and our two wing-backs because it seemed like an awful lot at the time it was transitioning through um, Kelly, Simpson and Cook. But... Very, the tempo was very confusing, didn't really change throughout the game. It felt like when we took the lead, it was like, OK, that's a smash and grab. Let's get in at half time. JT sort it out and let's come out and put the game to bed. But we didn't seem to change anything even when we went 1-0 up. No, that, you know, that's what I mean. You know, in the second half, we it, it took us a while, but we bought an extra midfielder on and the, and the shape seemed to change. But, you know, it didn't serve us as well as I thought it would. no. Doesn't seem to think that two up top's a problem, is it, Sam? You know, we look at Stoke and we think, oh, going at nil-nil looks like we struggled, but actually we could have gone in two-nil two nil up if we were a bit more clinical. Um, and everyone's all over Surridge having a bit of a, an average game and we go back to the one up top tonight. I don't think two up top's the problem. Um, we just didn't need to play wing-backs tonight, I don't think. Bro I, I mean, Neil, Neil mentioned Brooks there. I mean... I was surprised how much space Millwall gave Brooks. Every time he had the ball, he had space and time to play with. The problem was he was picking it up too deep. And I think if we had played a better formation, maybe a 4-3-3, where we could have been a little bit more proactive and got him a bit about 10, 15 yards higher up and closer to Slanky, we might have been able to cause a bit more damage. Um, but, but with them sitting quite deep when we had the ball from across the back line, it was always going to be a tough ask, really. OK, what we're going to do, we're going to bring in Al Gard, who's, uh, oh, he's 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 just uh, he disappeared for a minute. But Morgan, what we're going to do, um, we'll switch it up. But what, you know, before I let you go, um, can you give just me a man of the match tonight? I can, but can I say one other thing? Sure, yeah. First, the um, Kurt just mentioned Lewis Cook, uh, um, David Brooks, um, the amount of space that Millwall gave him. Lewis Cook, in the second half, went on a run and must have ran 40 yards and then gave it. And Jack Stacey and him just, for whatever reason, it just didn't work. But Mil Mill gave uh, uh, David Brooks and Lewis Cook on that occasion a lot of space. And it's quite, um, we didn't punish him on this occasion, but I was very, very surprised. Um, and just briefly, E to ask for. Um, Sorry, it doesn't say, it's not saying the name. Sam, this is embarrassing. Uh, no, carry on. Are you talking about Neil? Uh, Neil, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Sorry, yeah. It, it disappeared. Sorry, Neil. Yeah, um, all right, mate. It, do you reckon that you were lucky that you didn't go down to 10 men on a couple of your players? The referee had an <laughs> shamble of performance or even in LOM for both teams. He could have put several. But do you think that you were lucky that you didn't see one red card or even two? Uh, considering that one of the players, old man, lives on the same estate as me, <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I will tell him, to, uh, I thought the referee was pretty poor all round, to be honest with you. You got, yeah, you got a couple of touches in the first half, I think there was a couple of definite yellow cards, and we probably should have had a couple of yellow cards in the first half. And I think that, I think that. Cooper was slightly lucky, was lucky on Saturday, didn't get sent off, was lucky tonight. But I will say, I thought that, I know you're going to refer to Ryan Leonard being the second one. I thought he should have been booked, but, but I didn't think his booking was a booking. I thought he slipped and fouled your fella. I thought that was a bit harsh, but but the referee was poor. Yeah, but he... Yeah, but he didn't book what three, four, five players in that first half. I think one or two, three Millwall players should have been booked, and definitely, yeah, but definitely a couple of Bournemouth players. But, but well, that's in retrospect, isn't it? Yeah, but it's quite nice to have a referee not dishing out red cards. As I think he might have knackered what was quite a decent game. It was quite end to end. It was quite even. It was quite exciting. 
Yeah, we found that in the game against Watford, which he uh, refereed where Lloyd Kelly should have probably seen red uh, early doors, but I think he got away with a yellow for that. So, um, you know, based on the first sort of 10 minutes or so, uh, we kind of saw the way it was going. So, uh, yeah. But anyway, Neil, thank you so much for coming on. Really appreciate yeah, no problem, it. And, um, who's your next game against? Uh, Nottingham Forest, I think we gift them three points on Saturday <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> well, you know, as long as you take points off Norwich, Brentford, Watford, Swansea, those types of teams, we'll be happy. So as long as you return the favour with them, we'll be, you know, we'll be all right with you. Yeah, cheers, lads. Thank you very much indeed. I'm glad you enjoyed the game. Cheers, Neil. Thank you very much. That's Neil from That Millwall Podcast. And uh, if you if you want to see more of his opinions, then check out the previous video because he did a bit of a preview with Craig. And yeah, so Morgan, um, we'll give you a chance to do a, a you know a team rating out of ten and and a man of the match. Uh, team rating out of 10, I'm going to go for 5. And um, for a man of the match, it's going to have to go to Begovic. He made a couple of key saves. And I can't look um, I can't look on anyone else, to be honest. That game probably bored me more than any other Bournemouth game I watched this season. So. However, okay. though, however, though, there was one of the best moves that we've seen in that first half that had it resulted in a goal, we'd have all been cooing, but sadly it didn't. Stanislas's shot was blocked. But yeah, I do agree on the whole. It was, I mean, I wouldn't say it's boring, just hugely frustrating. frustrating. But, and hopefully yeah. his injury, and hope, you mentioned Junior Stanislas. I know he's had a lot of problem with his knee, so hopefully that doesn't look too bad. And uh, as this man down the bottom of my screen tells me, we need to be getting some more people in in January. A couple of new yeah. signings. But well, yeah, he yeah. can go on for the next half an hour who he wants. Probably Ivan Tony knowing him, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Cheers, Morgan, guys. appreciate it. Thank you very much. Love to have you on, Morgan. Right then, so um, from Florida, we've got uh, Daniel, who's going to be joining us as well. Uh, and also Billy Day is here with us too. Craig, Heather and John Spark are uh, all waiting in the wings to join us. And if you want to take part for later on in the show, then all you need to do is just go to that address at the bottom of the screen, afcbpodcast.com forward slash take part. And then you'll be put in the waiting room I'll bring you in as soon as possible. And also, if you do us a favour, hit that like button if you're watching on YouTube. If you're watching on Facebook, you can also like it, but why not follow our page as well? So then, Daniel, we'll come to you in Florida. Now, a little birdie tells me that you may be on a player rating show in the next 24 hours. Is that right? Yeah. Amazing. Looking forward to seeing your opinions on that game today because it was a frustrating one, wasn't it, Daniel? Yeah, um... I'm kind of not like in the best mood to do it after the game. <laughs> yeah. So I put my alarms very early because I'm very excited. So hopefully I get in a better mood tomorrow. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, you know, the only thing that I can really th say today is that it was, you know, we, we weren't great, but, you know, Millwall, they did all right. And they obviously they obviously did their research and, you know, they played really well against us. It seems like you've got a load of notes there in front of you, Daniel. So you're like, if you had to sum up that game in a sentence, how, how would you sum it up? A lot of six and sevens. Uh, a lot of six and sevens. Yeah. Well, you know, Bournemouth were at six and sevens. Kurt? Just a thought. Could, could Tej not just drop 11 Asmir Begovic's down for Daniel when he puts him <laughs> yeah. on the screen? <laughs> yeah, it, it would be nice because, you know, Daniel, you know, Asmir Begovic once again proved invaluable. What a saviour he is, eh? Yeah. Without him, I, I don't want to say this, but without him, we we would not be doing well. Mm. Yeah, because I feel like he's our saviour. For most yeah. of our games, so yeah, yeah, no, completely, completely agree. Billy's here with us, and uh, not the usual smiley, happy face that we're used to seeing, Billy. No, um, after 60 minutes, my computer decided to shut down and restart, and I had a nightmare. I was straight onto my phone to my best mate, who's a Millwall fan, yeah, and there was a massive group call because I'm from London, so I've got a lot of Charlton fans, lots of Millwall fans from that area of London. So I was straight on the phone, and as soon as I he scored, Millwall scored, I'm just like, no, nah, I'm, I'm done. I'm done because yeah. I just know for the rest of the week, I'm going to get the stick. I'm going to get the stick. So, but we dominated the game and 
for the first half, we were we were stronger. We should have won it. Referee again, bottled it. But um, it, it's two two points last time. That's a crucial two. We've dropped out today on that race for the promotion. Kurt, talk to me about Dominic Solanke, because obviously you're wanting him to score a certain amount of goals this season. Uh, he was largely ineffective in that first half. He didn't really, I mean, you know, any time he got the ball, he seemed to have two or three players on him. Um, but when he got that one chance, he took it. Um, you know, analyse his performance for me today. Yeah, I mean, he did OK. But I mean, he took the one chance that he got. So, you know, maybe that number nine instinct he's working, you know, very hard towards. Um, he's 10. He's halfway there. Um, but I would say at this point that he's not had a setback yet. You know, he's not had an injury. He's barely been rested in the league. So we're at the halfway point. He's at the halfway point. It is touch and go whether he gets to 20. Um, and I hope he does. But I've said probably time and time again on these free for alls, when those creative players don't turn up or we try and overplay it and try and score the perfect goal like we were trying to do in the first half, when it doesn't come off, where are we scoring our other types of goals? Because I just don't seem to remember us scoring scruffy goals. We oh. seem to score very good goals and I just want someone to knee in or something. And we don't seem to score goals like that. So looking, I'll bring three, three things to the table, Sam. Um, Nine nine draws now in the, for the season. Uh, we're the second highest in the league. Aerial battles. We lost 22 aerial battles today. And I refer back to Rotherham. We struggled aerially against them. We drew the game. Um, yeah, and I forgot my third point because I was thinking <laughs> about aerial battles. Um, and, you, and you threw me off with Dom Solanke. But... Mm. It does worry me how many games we're drawing. And I was looking at the next four or five fixtures, thinking 12 out of 15, we should comfortably be looking to get. Um, and we've dropped points against a team that we should be comfortably beating, in my opinion. So um, it is going to be it's going to be a fine line between promotion it, uh, automatically and, and playoffs. Okay, I've got to say, it doesn't bode well you saying you got three points and only mentioning two of them, considering you're a YouTuber these days. Um, <laughs> tell us you know, tell us a little bit about what you're doing with your channel with um, with Craig. Yeah, so it's an opportunity to provide some extra um, AFC Bournemouth content. Um, as you know, Sam, I, I don't know, there's not enough hours in the day, I don't think, for you to uh, get some Bournemouth content out for all of us. So it's an opportunity for us to get a little bit of extra stuff out for the fans. Uh, we're looking to do a lot of stuff live so people can interact. We've got a Gaffer's Press review on Friday ahead of Luton. Um, so join us for that. That's 7.30pm. And actually, I've got two guests. So I've got a Bournemouth guest um, and I've also got a Luton uh, guest as well. And he does a lot of stuff for the Hatters YouTube. So um, we look at how preparations are going in training uh, and we try and predict who JT might pick for the for that game. So join us for that. And um me and Craig are just, the, the more subscribers we get, the more followers, the more content we can put out there, um, yeah. the more we can, uh, you know, hopefully everyone can enjoy it. Brilliant. And uh, make sure you follow Kirk on Twitter. And there is his handle. And on there, you can see the live broadcast that he does before the games. And also he's got a link in his bio to the YouTube channel. Do check it out, Kirk. Thanks so much for coming on. No worries. If I think of that third point, I'll let you know in the chat. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, no worries. I'm so looking forward to that. And also, um, Daniel, looking forward to seeing you on Tom's show tomorrow, mate. Bye, guys. Cheers, buddy. And also, Billy, thanks for coming on. I appreciate it was brief today, but yeah, there's a few people waiting that we're going to get through. So, no thank you very much. See you in a bit. Cool. Cheers, mate. Uh, so, then, uh, Heather's waiting. Craig standing by. John's here as well. And we've got Jeremy, too. Uh, so, firstly, before we go to them, just want to tell you about a couple of lockdown interviews that we've got coming your way. Two of them, one of them could be explosive. Really looking forward to that one. Um, we're recording that one very soon. And another with an ex-Cherries player from the 90s that I'm sure has got some stories to tell. Two lockdown interviews coming your way and uh, make sure you're subscribed to that. And also telling you about that Cherries print. Probably seen the video on uh, the weekend when we did the watch along. But if you want to... Uh, get involved and win that go to afcbpodcast.com slash print the video will give you all the information there it will look good on any wall right sales pitch over someone who appeared uh with kirk yesterday 
uh, was John Spark, and he is with me now. John, how are you? All right, mate? Not too bad. I'll get over that eventually. But um, yeah, wasn't wasn't how I imagined my evening going. But uh, I'm not doing too bad otherwise. No. Okay. And to um, to get as many people in, actually, we're going to go five ways with this. So, uh, Craig, I'm going to bring Craig in now as well. Craig, how are you? Yeah, disappointed after that, to be honest, mate. Um, but to be fair, Millwall did play very, very well. Um, they played to their strengths. So it feels like two points lost, but it could be a valuable point at the end of the season. Yeah. I agree. We've got Heather here as well. Heather, how are you? Have the cherries. I'm good, thank you. Have <laughs> the cherries. Uh, um, oh, just, an, just a really annoying one, wasn't that, tonight? Because I felt as though we probably had enough in the locker to get three points, but it was just that moment of, well, lapse of concentration, long ball, route one, and Mill will score. How are you feeling? Um, disappointed with the results, but... I found the game more exciting than the last two league games that they played. I the last two hours just quite bored and yeah, this one oh, I felt like I don't know, it's more exciting somehow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, I agree. I mean well, we'll see what Jeremy's got to say, because Jeremy's uh, in North Carolina and he's with us too, so we're gonna go five ways with this. Jeremy, how are you, sir? I'm doing well, Sam. How are you, my friend? Yeah, very good. How much of the game did you manage to see tonight? I got to see about a half of it again. I was at work and driving around and had the game on in the car and um, pretty disappointed. Um, I agree with Craig. I, I think that's two points dropped. Uh, that's that's not a point gained. There's no excuse for that, in my opinion. Mm. Craig, what do you think it went wrong tonight? Um, I think we didn't win any of the aerial battles at all. Um, Mill are a tall, strong side. Um, Jake Cooper at the back. One thing that I I just didn't understand, and during the first half, there was a corner that come in, and it was a mix. And Chris Temple and Willow referred to it as well. It seemed like it was a mix of zonal marking and also picking up their men and then one of their players who, who was it that peeled back and it was a free header you know he, he was completely free um so that yeah, was, was it, quite annoying yeah, yeah was it ryan leonard i think was that the yeah. kind of like side footed shot that jack stacy blocked and yeah you know that was a that was a, th a horrible three minutes because you know obviously you had jed wallace going through you know, of course, like Asmir Bagovic comes to our rescue again, and then like Lerma clearing off the line, and then that as well. It all it all felt a bit last ditch, didn't it? It did, yeah. And to be fair, you know, if you know if Millwood had got a goal um, at that point, then you know we could be looking at a lot worse story um, because I don't think that again, I don't think they're the worst side. I, don't know why they're in 17th place um it? their goal was very much route one um get it up to the big man and you know in the end it was well taken um by matt smith i think it was his first touch wasn't it as well oh uh, yeah no i think it was yeah it just fell to him really nicely and he and he just managed to stab it home now i felt in midfield today, we were lacking, and uh, Kurt comes on the chat, uh, John, and says to ask you about Jefferson Lerma. We'll go uh, for it. Yeah, I, I saw that and was thinking. I honestly thought his third point was going to be um, uh, that the battery wasn't running uh, today because Lewis Cook wasn't his usual self. But I think it was a combination of a few players. Admittedly, Lerma probably had a relatively standard game from what he's had recently. Not really getting on the ball and making anything happen. That's not really his job, but he certainly didn't really help in terms of that regard. He battled. He won a fair share of duels, but he probably was better than most in terms of that. I felt it was the midfield all round that really wasn't clicking in terms of Lewis Cook wasn't quite finding the pass as we expect him to. He was going for a lot of long balls, which looked like they might work, but didn't. David Brooks, I felt, was like half a second behind making the passes that he needed to make a couple of times um, and just wasn't really linking up the play enough. Stanislas, 
I thought was doing the job that I wanted, that he he was the one that was sort of making stuff happen going forward for me. Um, and him going off, I thought would help us shore us up a bit in terms of changing to a three in the mid three in the middle, but we didn't get enough time to really see that happen because they scored pretty soon after it. It's there was a number of things that just weren't clicking, and I really think as though um, Kirk mentioned it before that we really needed two up top today. I feel oh. because there wasn't necessarily the link that we needed between Lewis Cook, who's going to be the playmaker from deep, and David Brooks, and then oh. Solanke, who wasn't involved at all in the game apart from the goal um and the one chance where i feel as though he turned two men and got fat and got a whistle blown on him for a foul as the referee had a generally appalling performance but that was one of two calls that in quick succession where the referee got wrong it's just 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 the link up just wasn't there today and i think a second striker really would have gotten the captain much the pigeons a lot more because we didn't get Solanke involved enough and funnily enough the one time we did he banged at the back of the net and that's what he's doing at the moment so yeah a lot of yeah. things I, I think I agree with that with the second man up top, you know, because it seemed that like all of their defenders were just focusing on Dom Solanke. So to have a second person to be in amongst it, I don't know, you can Josh King or Sam Sarage, you know, whatever. But I feel as though it did need that. And unfortunately, um, you know, we didn't, well, we didn't really work it out because he tried a change on 70 minutes, but, you know, that didn't really help things. Um, Heather, who, who played well for you today? Hmm. It's a tricky one, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Other than Begovic. Yeah, well, um, well, exactly. I mean, you know, he's our side, he's our player that is the default, you know, sort of go-to man at any time uh, we play. But I mean, other than that, you're sort of looking at it thinking, you know, Jack Simpson, I thought actually did okay. Yeah, um, he, he's been good tonight. Um, Lewis Cook was off his game a bit, and I don't know that nobody seemed to really stand out. Just, and you know that's the difficult things with draws. I mean, you know, Jeremy, did you pick up on anything tonight in terms of like, you had a good game or anything like that? Oh man, boy, that's a tough question. I think Begovic, uh, that's the obvious answer. Oh. And again, he's it, if if we were uh, awarding the you know player of the season, I think he wins it hands down. No offense mm -hmm. to Dom Solanke, but it's Begovic all day, you know, every day and twice on Sunday, as we say. However, there's a few things that I, I, I did notice, and I, I agree. I, I'm watching the chat, and I've heard others. Why we're playing five at the back. I know the wing backs. I think, could we could argue, are our weakest. Uh, oh. That's probably our weakest link. However, we, we seem to be playing to our weakness rather than our strength. And so we've got all these, these, these guys who, in theory, can create and score, yet we're not – we're not playing to their strengths, right? I said a week or two ago, we need to figure out a way to get David Brooks the ball more because he does have the talent, the quality that, that to play in the Premier League. Yet oh. we just can't seem to figure out a formation. We just, we bunker down, which I despise. Oh. And, we, we did, and, and especially against a team like Millwall, who is not a threat, yet oh. they were countering us. You could see it. They countered us. And like, they, like Kirk, uh, Craig said, Kirk said they're right down the middle. And yeah. we just struggled. And, and so to me, again, and one other thing Kurt said, I'm sorry I'm, I'm monopolizing the time here, no, but no, no. Right, at the, right when we would get to the 18-yard box, we're looking for the perfect play, right? We're looking for that perfect, you know, give and go, one, two, beautiful goal, rather than the, the, just the dirty goal. Just get the ball on net, right? In hockey, they say, put the puck on net, look for a yeah. rebound, and get a dirty rebound, get a dirty Ooh. goal. We just won't do that. We look for that perfect goal, and, and we don't have Ronaldo or Messi on the team. They're not going to do that. Uh, but, again, I sound uh, maybe too critical. Um, we've got to do something, though, because the Norwiches of the world are winning these games one to nothing, and we are drawing these games. And I'm afraid it may come back to haunt us at the end of the year. Go, Craig. Um, one thing that I uh, picked up on today – was especially Lloyd Kelly. Um, I believe it was Lloyd Kelly who was at fault for their goal as mm -hmm. well. Um, just trying to cast my mind back to it. Um, I think out the back three, um, I think S Simpson has been playing quite well. He's shown that he's a he is a championship player. Whether or not he can make the step up 
week in, week out in the Premier League? I don't think so. Um, but I think Kelly at the moment is a weak link. Um, so he needs to be careful. Um, one thing that I would have, and to be perfectly honest, I I went for the wing backs. I went for Rico. The only player that, that you know, I had different to what Jason put out was Stacey on the right-hand side instead of Smith, because I think Stacey can create a lot more. Um, I think Smith is being poor. Um, he wasn't particularly great today as well. I do think, though, if we did have two up the top, you know, we would have given them more trouble. Um, yeah. I think that they had... Solanke was a completely marked man. Um, it was no fault of his, you know, why he struggled so much. And to be fair, you know, the opportunity that he did have, he took. Um, but there wasn't enough of them. Um, so, yeah, I was very, very disappointed with Smith and Kelly in particular. Um, I think Lewis Cook, it's been mentioned as well on here, his distribution was poor today. He went on that maze run running the second half, um, must have run about 40 yards, and the pass was shocking. Yeah, final ball, yeah, long to go. It, it was horrendous. But um, even in that scary three minutes in the first half, when Jed Wallace, Jed Wallace should should never have got that far. He should have been picked up. Well, he looked decent that. for them tonight, I thought, and but we sort of made him yeah. look more decent than what he actually, actually is. I've seen him play for Portsmouth, and he's 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 not brilliant. No, he's he's not a fantastic player. Um, he does what he does, and to be fair, again, it was Begovic. You know, nine out of ten championship keepers, he would have put that past. Yeah. And I think, you know, you probably look at the likes of Brentford, Norwich, he, he would have probably put put that past their goalkeeper. Um, mm. So, Tricky yeah, one. that's worrying, you know, why he, he got so much room to do that. All right, well, we'll get we should, to you. Um, Go ahead, then. Give Cameron Kartikas another start, because he seemed, you know, he was very good on defence on Saturday. And we seem to need better defenders. That's a really good shout, John. I, I think that he personally he could. Um, the only thing is, is that if if I I do agree with Craig that Kelly, maybe not massively defensively, but certainly as a force going forward, combined with occasional defensive mislap, mishaps, he's the one that possibly would drop out at the moment. That would force Jack Simpson into left centre back, and I do not like Jack Simpson on a left centre back. I think he gets flustered on the ball and makes terrible decisions when he's stuck on the left hand side there. And I don't trust him in that position whatsoever. I trust him in the middle, but I don't trust him at left centre back for me. So I I wouldn't necessarily want because it would have to be him forced over because he's the left centre he's the left footed of the three. Um, I just would before you switch switch us out. Just the one point I would like to make about. The yeah, issue sure. I think a lot of people have with left back, left the three at the back versus four at the back, is that quite as Jeremy said, we need to try and get um, Brooks on the ball more, and he's going to do best in the middle or coming off from the right hand side. Mm -hmm. The issue we've got, as a lot of people might think back to 2015, sort of our promotion season, we don't have any wingers, not really. We don't really have any wingers. So we've got no, we've got no thrust on the wing unless we play with attacking fullbacks or wing packs. So really doesn't matter whether we play with three or four our width, our width is going to come from those full backs or wing backs and maybe we're not that strong at the moment in those positions but that's how we're going to best create space in the middle by at least making it look like we'll attack down the wing and then forcing it inside and making sure that we can actually do something with it but we're not moving the ball around quickly enough today in particular and it's happened before so we've got to try and find a way of sort of getting that happening more often and lewis cook is you know the key when he's not firing then, yeah. you know, we struggle. And I think Lewis, regarding Lewis Cook, I think teams are scouting him, and he loves that, you know, that long pass down the channel from our end, you know, trying to find a breakout. And I watched it, that pass get intercepted three or four times in the first half today. So, yeah, agree. Well, great to have all your thoughts, guys. Really appreciate you coming on, John. Thanks so much. Really appreciate it. Cheers. Cheers, mate. Thank you so much. And also, Craig, Jeremy, and Heather. Nice to have you on. Thank you. Cheers, Thanks, mate. Um, Thank I'm, you. I'm all for the American Carter Vickers. Get the American in there, right? <laughs> yeah, good man. Good man. Cheers, Jeremy. Thanks See for you having guys. me on, mate.
Really appreciate it. Uh, so we got Filippo here with us. Hello, Hi, Filippo, Sam. the Italian legend. How are you, mate? Yeah, <laughs> quite good. Uh, but uh, yeah, today it was uh, it was a bad game, wasn't it? Because uh, uh, Mirror played way better, and maybe uh, they they deserve the win. But uh, sadly, we have we have to be a draw. Sadly. Um, uh, I, I I don't know where uh, exactly uh, they they got us. Maybe in uh, in the long balls I saw I saw lot, lots lots uh, lots of uh, long balls in uh, on that we could that our defenders could take. So yeah, yeah. and uh, uh, another time uh, we we have to we have to com to commentate uh, that we lo lost points. Uh, with those teams who are in the right side of the table. I don't know. I really don't know what, what is the problem when we play these teams. I really don't know. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's very difficult to sort of, you know work it out sometimes. And I think I'm going to have to watch uh, you know some of the action back to work it out. But um, I don't think I want to after that. But um, anyway, we've got Ivan here as well. Um, Ivan and also Keith Thomas here with us too. Yeah, nice to see Hello, you, boys. Peeps. Hello there. Ivan, how are you, buddy? You all right? Oh, man. Uh, yeah, I think I've been around. Happy New Year, guys. Uh, and it's been a while. Uh, I don't know. I think I think I'm conflicted because we're halfway through the season. Um, yeah. So it's been good. So there's a lot of positives, a lot of like negatives. Um, but today was frustrating. I mean, it, it shows again in Sheffield. I mean... <laughs> we've we been struggled against Wickham and we, we won against them. Um, we struggled today again. Uh, the bo the bottom teams we seem to struggle when we play great against like you know maybe the top six. Yeah, we lost against Brentford. It was it was a silly game, but um, I don't know. So so many positives again. The the, the Dom Solanke one. We we kept saying at the beginning of the season we we're worried about a striker. He's double digits now. Yes, we might need someone else to partner up with him. But Surich has shown up. Um, I, I don't know, man. I, I'm just so conflicted today. It's like I want to be like oh, I'm so mad, but at the same time, I'm like, you know what? We're not we're not doing bad. We're third on the championship, but then you see the points table, and then you're like, oh man, they're like two, three points away. Mm. Um, but I yeah, I, I, oh, sorry, well, go ahead. Yeah, well, oh. I, you know, I, I I think it was always going to be quite a hard game based on the fact that Mill mm. they seem to be doing really well against you know the top teams this uh, this season. Yeah. And and I think like one of the biggest thing, and like you know, uh, my comrade from uh, <laughs> from from uh, the other American guy that we had he was saying like the fullbacks, but but I, I might disagree. I think the center backs we might we might be hurting there. You know, uh, we the only true center backs that we have um, are what Simpson, Mepham, and Cook, and then we put Stacy in the middle. I mean, uh, when we not say sorry about it. Kelly in the middle, Rico sometimes. Uh, and, you know, we have Carter's like Vickers as well. Um, so, so I don't know. I feel like we might need new signings in the in the in, in this January window, more defensive than attacking. Because I don't know, attacking wise, I feel like we're okay, but we are missing Denjuma. Denjuma has been a, a, a great miss for us. I don't know. I mean, again, it's just my point of view. I might be wrong. Yeah. You know what? I completely. I mean, yeah, Dan Juma. Apparently, he's back uh, training on grass mm -hmm. at the moment. So the quicker he, because he gives us that unpredictability, and bringing him on yeah. is a real, you know, a real threat. And you know that he's going to make these reckless runs, um, you know, towards goal. And you know, based on his form this season, invariably he will score them. But I don't know. Like, yeah, we had you know three at the back, and some people were saying you know the wing backs were very suppressed because Mill they pressed very high and that exposed Lerma and Lewis Cook in the middle and you saw the way that they were cutting through our midfield um you know really easily so maybe switch into a four and then put like a billing on a bit earlier or something like that maybe that could have been the answer but Keith you're a bit of a tactician what, what do you I mean what do you think of that where did it go wrong well I'm a big fan of three uh three four three I think that's the way Cruyff played and I I'm a big fan of Cruyff and how he set it up. We're just not aggressive enough. We're not aggressive on the press. We we don't seem to uh, close them down quick enough. Um, we're also a bit ponderous sometimes um, with getting the ball out from the back. We haven't got anyone from the centre-backs 
driving into the middle of the park. Oh. That's why we're missing Meps at the moment. He does that because in reality, you could you could still have two at the back, and one of the centre backs goes into the middle of the park to shore it up. Um, we have three guys up top this evening, but we weren't providing them any service uh, apart from Brooks on the uh, uh, initial run and. Yeah, obviously the goal was taken really well, but it's just not played aggressively enough. It's just not, we don't seem to control the game. When we when we go with 3-5-2, we seem to control the game more, but we lose it a little bit up top. But um, that, that we really need to be far more, getting more overlaps. We need to be getting... Um, a, a lot more overloads on the, on on the wings, oh. uh, and, and and also better through balls from Lewis Cook. He wasn't doing that tonight, yeah. so it, it's it's a formation we're seeming to struggle. However, it is a difficult formation. It it is um, it it's not something I think it comes naturally to our uh, to our, our style of play, but but. I think we've got to keep working at it. And, uh, but, yeah, it's just not aggressive enough on the press. We don't win the ball back within six seconds. Yeah. We seem to allow... Solanke works really hard up top. And when he does lose the ball, he, he, he's, he gets it back really quickly. But Brooks, he, he seems to be worried about getting an injury or something like that. Um, so could it be worth just dropping him in into the middle so creating a bit more space for him? But... Yeah, the 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 three four three shouldn't be a defensive. It should be an offensive uh, formation. As I say, with centre a centre back driving the ball through, like Cumin used to do. I'm not, I'm not saying we're going to be Barcelona, but that philosophy of someone like a Cumin, a, a Libero coming through, driving into the middle of the park, and then allowing our playmakers to to um, start working the ball because we've got the playmakers in there and we, we've got the uh, the players to do it but we seem so timid with it and we allow play to come on to us and we need to be aggressive right from the start and and as I say hunt down that ball and get that ball back and keep possession because without the ball they can't score but we allow the ball too much to them and as I say we don't seem to have the hunger to to get that ball back quickly get it up to our front guys and then do the damage. Keith, we're going to keep you on for a bit because uh, there's a bit of a reunion with you and Steve that uh, needs to be oh, had. Oh, I'm going to get tearful now. I think you've had one already, but we're going to bring him in shortly. But, for, you know, Filippo, before you go, um, what do we need to do ahead of our next match against Luton? What needs to be changed? Is it formation? Is it just, you know, like individuals need to up their game? Or do you think any players should be rested? Uh, no, no. Um... I don't know if uh, uh, maybe the changes, uh, the changes, uh, uh, Jason Tindall may made the changes a little too late. Oh. Maybe, uh, yeah, maybe we we have to. He has to put some some players on the bench before uh, that, uh, before he did uh, tonight. And uh, and I don't know, I don't know who, who maybe can play uh, at um, in the uh, replacing uh, so, some. Uh, I really don't know. But uh, sure, we have to stop losing points with uh, with these teams because <laughs> seeing uh, seeing how we play these teams, uh, I'm a little worried for Saturday against Luton. <laughs> I mean, we drew <laughs> back in December. Yeah, no, and uh, you know, you're smiling away, Ivan, and nodding your head to what he says. Yeah, I, I agree. I was like, I was looking at the stats. It's like you know, like uh, I, I just look at the games, look at the stats, and it's like the last, the last, last, even the five games. I mean, we lost points against Luton. We we lose points against Millwall. Uh, six points there. I mean, like the, there was ties, like you know, like four points there, and then we lose against Brentford. I mean, like so, so we lose so many points, and like you know, the last five games is insane. Um, I, I, I just want to come in on this. Sorry, there are ahead. no gimmies in. There are no gimmies in this. Oh, league. Yeah, and, and and we can't expect to. We we yes, we are a, a Premiership quality side, but we can't expect to, to be, roll over teams week in week mm. out. We're right in the mix at the moment, and we, we've got to remember that 
But it could have it could have been a lot worse this season with with Eddie going, Jason coming in. It could have gone all awry. But we're tucked right in, and we're we're still in the hunt. And so let's not wet our pants at the moment. Let's let's just see where we're going. Um, but but as Norwich are finding out, uh, look, it, it's a really tough league. This, and I think we 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 might be expected to, you know, for where we are at the moment, we're right in the hunt. But we, Millwall came out; they played mm. their counter attacking game and long ball, and, and we're not a big side. Uh, but we're facing teams with big boys in them and all that. So, you know, this, this, we've got to play what's in front of us and everything's a trade-off and we're going to have strengths and weaknesses. We're far better technically than most of the teams we're facing. So what did they do tonight? Long ball up and Matt Smith scores a goal. And he's, he's, a, he's a huge lad and he'd be a handful for any defence. So this, this just bring a bit of perspective. Stop wetting our pants at the moment. We're right in there. And and I, I do agree with you. That's why, like, I, I've been conflicted, like, you know, like today. Because we can say, like, we can be frustrated about this game. But then again, like, you know, we know the championship was hard. We knew these teams are going to fight against us. They're going to play the long ball or defensively against us. And I think we've done well. I mean, we've done well to be in third place. And, and we have lost some key matches. And, and that's where the conflict comes because it is frustrating at the same time. But we have so many positives. I mean, we, we could be We've lost six, three. Seven, three. There we We've are. lost three this season. <laughs> I mean, that's six, yeah. and, and we're the second highest top scorers. Uh, you know, uh, this, I'm, not, I'm not saying we shouldn't improve. And as I say, I think oh, I think yeah. with our formation at the moment, moment, we should be far more aggressive. We should be far more at it. Yeah, I agree. And uh, and and uh, and show our technical quality and really dominate games. But we seem to be a bit timid, and we also don't seem to be able to make the players at the moment don't seem to be able to make. The changes. Brooksy yeah. was getting frustrated. He was getting blocked off, which is what they wanted to do. Why not come in deep then? And then they drag out one of their centre backs. They were playing three at the back tonight, yeah. and they they if he dropped in deep, it would have meant that one of their centre backs would have had to come out, which would have created space, which would have created one on ones. And, and and overlappings and all that sort of thing. Smithy didn't get forward enough for me tonight, and his delivery is not brilliant. And it's right back yeah. as a, 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 you know the right back position. It might be we need to look at, but but we just need to remember we're not going to walk this league. No team's going to walk this league, and we are right in it. And and we're we're fighting and. We're a danger team. And the reason why teams are setting up so defensively, because they fear us. We've got to take advantage of that. We've got to really press these guys, get our best players in uh, with technical quality and really dominate games and uh, go out and play without fear and play with love and play, look after that ball, keep the possession. You know, that's the basis of, 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 of this formation. Possession. And then if they haven't got the ball, they can do whatever they like. As long as we keep that ball and when we lose it, we get it back as quickly as possible. Hunt them down. Make them feel the pressure. And, Tell you what, uh, uh, that's... Uh, do you fancy a job as a motivational speaker, Keith? Because I'm not being funny. You, you, like, some of your things. Yeah, go in the locker room. <laughs> right, yeah. Please like, go in the locker room. Look, you know, keep this right. I got more to be in you know, Tom's agreeing no, the, the, with you. Uh, Rich is calling you a legend. So, you know, fair play. Um, what I'm going to do is quickly... I'm gonna, Sunday. Yeah, <laughs> yeah um, you, Keith, I'm going to keep you in just temporarily. But, Filippo, we're going to no say goodbye to you now, mate. Um, so, you've got to Ciao, my fella. Say. Ciao. Yes, guys. I'm the chance. And, uh, yeah, I've got a busy week because uh, I've got the, this game of the Cherries but, uh, tonight. But uh, on Friday, it's Derby Night in Rome. Oh, huge. oh, oh really huge. that'd be good. Enjoy, Filippo. Up the cherries. Yeah, thanks ciao, everybody. Ciao, thanks ciao, everybody. Ciao. Bye bye. Cheers, ciao, ciao. And, and also to Ivan as well. Thanks very much for coming on, mate. Really appreciate it. Sam, thank you, Keith. A pleasure. Have a good one, guys. Take care, Ivan. Take pleasure, care, mate. mate. Nice to see you, buddy. So Steve is coming in as well. Steve Hensman's been patiently waiting. So sorry about the delay there, Steve. My goodness. No worries. Keith, no Keith in his motivational speaking. There's a job waiting to happen. I know. There. If he was Scottish, he'd be like Braveheart, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, it would have been. 
Yeah, yeah, uh, I cried in Braveheart when uh, Edward Longshanks died. I, I thought that was a travesty. But oh, the other Scottish oh. fellow, I couldn't give a monkey. No, <laughs> and also here tonight we've got um, Jamie Williams. So we're going to come to you, Jamie, first. Jamie, sorry it's taken so long to get you on. Uh, one all, I think most of us are pretty frustrated tonight. Are you the same? Yeah. Yeah, lo- uh, sloppy performance, wasn't it? We've seen too many of them, to be honest. Uh, far too many draws. But I agree with pretty much everything Keith said. What did we expect this season? Like Eddie Howe has been our manager for well nearly a decade. J- JT's obviously been there with him, but big players gone. Um, Callum Wilson scored lots of our goals. We, it was never going to be easy. The league's not easy. There's shocks near enough every week. Um, we are we're in the hunt. We're third at the moment. If someone said to you at the start of the season, halfway through the season, three losses. Uh, you're going to be third, only one point off of uh, second place in automatic promotion, five off the top. I think most of us would have took it, but the three-four-three for me doesn't work. Um, I think the double pivot in midfield, we struggle to play out from the back. Um, I think Lewis is better when he's got Billing, Lerma or Goslin, or at least two other players with him. I think we build up better in that system. I don't think three at the back is necessarily the issue because we've had probably better results um, overall when we've played it. Yeah. But I think the 3-4-3, three, three, we don't get Brooks and Stanislas or Dan Juma involved enough. Um, and we just seem to pass it around the in a back three with a four in midfield, two uh, double pivot. The ball transitions across the back three far too often. Whereas in a 3-5-2, Lewis Cook seems to be closer to, to the defenders, have two other central players with him so we can lay the ball off to and we seem to progress the ball higher at the pitch and whether that's Surridge and Solanke up front or Solanke right up there and Brooks just in, in the hole behind like sort of a diamond which we've uh, done a couple of times that's when we seem to do better um, but we're, we're doing okay I think we could do better I think he should have made changes earlier today I think it was clear that Millwall were the better side I think people saying there's two points lost it is in, if you said at the start of the game but overall I think they had by far the better chances. I think they can count themselves unlucky not to win today, never mind getting the draw. I think to say is two points dropped based on the actual game, I think that's wrong for me today. By the way, a lot of people, Jamie, are um, loving your T-shirt that you're wearing. Um, <laughs> back in the day, we had the, the uh, back of the net T-shirts. Is that the Eddie had a dream? Look at that bad boy. Yeah, oh, my goodness. Wow. That's absolutely so. so uh, did you buy one of them, or was that a prize? I can't remember what we did with I that. I think one. I think I won a prize. <laughs> did you? Oh my I god! That's so, yeah. hilarious. Oh, right, so he won a prize. And he got one of them, and yeah, take, it on road road. <laughs> <laughs> take it on Antiques Roadshow. It needs yeah, to go back on sale. Go on the merchandise. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I think you know. At some point, we will get some mugs and you know bottle openers. I think I've talked about those for a few. Yeah, where <laughs> are those bottle openers, Sam? Oh mate, we had a we had a bit of a disaster with them. I'm telling you, but um, is it Brexit? Can get them in. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> think on that. um, <laughs> Steve, um, Jamie talks a lot of sense, doesn't he? He does. Yeah. I I was just listening to that and thinking, yeah, it was exactly what I was going to. Well, more or less what I was going to say. I I do not understand. I know people are saying we don't we don't we don't need to be we we can't be given any games in this league. But you'd have thought with what squad we have and the players and the attacking options we have would be putting out better displays at home against teams like these. We've got, tonight, we've got, I think we've, we've got three, maybe four attacking players on the pitch. I just don't understand why we're not going after these teams. So we're setting up with a 5-2, five, five whatever it was. You know, five, well, I don't even know what it was. Well, it's meant but to it be was, three, four, three. Isn't it, Steve? But it didn't turn well, it out. Like it looked like a back five like at times five. to me. Yeah. But then you know, that's because the Millwall press was like so good. Rico and Smith were penned but, back. So effectively, it was a five. So in those circumstances, sometimes I think, well, you know, you have to force them to push or you go to a four. But, uh, you know, I don't know. I'm, why, aren't we, why aren't we pressing teams, you know, at home with the attacking options we've got? You know, we've got King, Raquel May, Jaden Anthony, all sat there on the bench, not doing anything. And yet we've got Lerma and five defenders who you'd say probably 
you know, more defensive minded than they are attacking minded. I, I just well, think it's strange, we're, isn't it? I just it's think strange, we're wasting the... opportunities. Sorry. Well, yeah, we're wasting yeah. opportunities. Like we said, we've we've had nine draws. All right, it's not a given to win any game in this league. But imagine where we'd be if yeah. we taught, turned half of those games into wins. I don't you know, know. Keith's gone, yeah. but he's. I think he's going to come back. That's the difference and... between us. And I think Norwich. he's wet his pants. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's the difference between us and Norwich. Like the amount of great games, I'm not sure exactly to hand, but I would say having watched. A, n- a number of their games, or at least the highlights of them, they've won a lot of games, sort of like with late goals, like two one or one nil, and they they're turning three points, uh, turning one point into three, and that's going to be the difference. I think they're going to win the league. I think I know we we obviously got hopes to win the league, but I realistically I think we're in a battle with Brentford. I think Swansea. I think this this strike situation. Brentford win their game in hand. They go above yeah. us. Don't they? I think Swansea will stay there for a while. I think that come the end of the season, unless they buy a strike, I think Jamal Lowe will. Uh, stop scoring. I don't think they got enough goals. They're tight at the back, but I think they'll catch up with them. I think it's between us, Brentford, and it depends if Watford can get their act together. But I think at the moment, it's looking like it's going to be Norwich winning the league and us and Brentford fighting out for second. And Brentford, obviously, the last couple of seasons have been right up there and they bottled it. So if, as long as we can be in with a shout with it, like, say, six, seven games to go, then is, any, is anyone's to play for? I just do think we have to be more... Um, sort of like proactive and a bit more aggressive. Uh, on the front foot, at there. Yeah, on the front foot. Not, I don't necessarily think the, the formation is necessarily the problem. It's, it's attitude is it was sloppiness with the, the passing. is the basics at times where we struggle. We Like the amount of times we give the ball away and cause our own issues, um, That then they put pressure on us and you could just sometimes we just cause our own downfall. The amount of times we've had clean sheets and Begovic has just earned it for us. That's sort of like papered over some cracks in our team. Like, I think we're doing well, but I think there's, there's a lot more potential. We have to get Brooks m- more involved. How, whatever formation yeah. that is, he, he has to, and that's on him as well. He, he needs to be like one in the ball, but also just like he, get, he gets sulky at, at, at times, I think, and when things don't go his way. But at the end of the day, he's one of the best talents in the league. He's got to find a way to get in the game because a lot of the time, he's a bit like he's, I'm, he's twice the player or 10 times the player as Harry Wilson. But a lot of times this season, he's been on the periphery of games and he needs to be a central figure for us. I think Dan Juma is a massive miss for us because he creates so yeah. much attention for himself by his explosiveness that they the opposition know that they got a threat going in the other way. Solanke's a come to feet player. Brooks is a come to feet player. Stanislav's a come to feet player. It's all uh, sort of ticky tacker around the box, trying to score the perfect goal. Smith doesn't really offer a lot down the down on the right anymore. He's he's okay, but we miss Stacey there. And Lloyd Kelly gets beyond Rico, but Rico's crossing wasn't great tonight. Lloyd Kelly, actually, I think Tyndall said he looks better at centre-back than he is at left-back in terms of his attacking output. I think that's probably true. But I think he's struggling a, a little bit with his playing out at the back at the moment. But I just think this, we've got potential to go and sort of cement the second-place team, put pressure on Brentford, who have notoriously bottled it the last few years. Um, but we have to be a bit more proactive. We have to take care of the ball better, and we have to sort of take for early doors get teams are going to set up in a low block they respect us we struggle against that all of last season i think that's the primarily the reason we went down but we have to we have the players to do it we have to get an early goal like we did in the, when we went up initially then they can sit back the entire game and if we get a goal or two goals we've seen against Huddersfield all right they didn't they they fielded this sort of second string but they can't sit back all game and then you get the opportunity for them to come out and then you can counter attack use the pace of your players but when they get set and we let them get set and we break the press and then we just look, sort of little pass around the edge of the box, they get set again. And then it's difficult to break teams down. We've seen it against Rotherham, seen it against Sheffield Wednesday, seen it against Millwall. See, uh, you could count, literally count on double hands. Do you mean? It's, teams are going to play like that. And we just got to find a way and be a bit more innovative and break these teams down. So, I mean, when are we going to go on this run, Steve? Because in the championship season of 2014-15, we, there was a, a spell where we uh, won six in a row and then we drew a few, but then we won five in a row. I think in our last 12 or 13 matches in the season, we were unbeaten where we won them all apart from four. At the moment, it just doesn't, like, it just doesn't feel like that. Like, it just doesn't have that feel. And, you know, you can't help but think, you know, Jamie's right. Teams like Norwich will probably go on to win the league 
Um, whether they deserve it or not, I'm not too sure. But it seems like everyone else is not putting pressure on them. Like Brentford, of course, they're not going to be playing for a while, so they're going to be falling behind, but they'll have games in hand. It's going to be really interesting to see how it pans out. And at the moment, I, I'm not feeling like automatic promotion at the moment. No, no. I, I think, well, I mean, we, we, we certainly need to go on a run sooner rather than later because these, these games are whizzing by. Um, you know, we keep saying they come thick and faster twice a week. Um, yeah. And we've played a lot of teams lower down the division. Um, we've dropped we've dropped points which we thought we'd have. Um, I don't, yeah, we've got we've got uh, Luton coming up. I mean, we've dropped points against them already. I mean, we have to put these ghosts to bed. And um, and I and I just think we just need to be more attacking with our play. I mean, just be a bit devil McCare, be a bit, you know, like we were in our promotion season, a bit, you know, we'll outscore the opposition, even like we were in the Premier League to some extent. Yeah. You know, I don't know why we're um, giving these teams such respect. I know they're not easy games and, you know, nobody sort of thinks you're going to walk every game. But we've got, a, you know, they should be fearing us. They, these yeah. these teams are turning out and and uh, and they're just, they're just saying, well, we're just going to low block you and, you know, try and nick a goal we're not bothered because we don't you know we know you're not very good at it mm. and I think we've got, like Jamie said we've got to find another way to deal with this yeah no I agree I agree well we we are going to call it a day now but I will just bring Keith back to, me, uh, to make a, a final point because I think he was going to cut in and talk about Jefferson Lerma in the centre of midfield and he seemed to be playing Same a little bit there. yeah he seemed to be playing a little bit deeper as the well in the first part of the game and previously at the start of the season he was more advanced. So, and also with Philip you know, Billing, I don't know whether he's defensive or he's better off in the attacking position. Like, I don't know. It seems to me we're constantly rotating. Yeah, we haven't settled into a side so far. We haven't. Jason still hasn't picked his uh, final eleven. Um, he's trying everyone out, which is fair enough. But uh, what I want to see is Jeff and and Phil or Goza really pressing on their on their. Defensive midfielders really pressing on their getting forward and pressing on their centre backs. Yeah, really, really get a press on them, and and we seem to have lost that. That if we if we Jeff is a I thought was better going forward, winning the ball high up the park, and then playing little layoffs so he can so he can get Brooksy in, so he can get uh, Stan in a bit more or or. or allow someone like Billing to be a roaming playmaker. But yeah. we've gone really gone very, very static at the moment. I don't see the the, the wide players uh, like Brooksy and, and, and Stan tonight. They weren't swapping over. They weren't causing their fullbacks any problems. They kept on going down the same side, playing the same thing. And after a while, they're, they're going to work that out. I want to see more interchanges, like people moving and covering each other when you're out of position. Um, and, and moving moving the ball about, and the only person that should be really static would be Steve Cook if he's playing in the middle or Simpson tonight, and and Lewis Cook as the uh, the deep line playmaker, and everything else should be revolving around that. Get the wing back swapping over, get get the 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 wide player swapping over. Let's if if Slanky's having no joy if he's getting the press, let him come deep and let let someone go beyond him. We're not doing that. We're not. No. We're not. We're we're playing to positions and not roles, and we're not not being clever enough. I mean, it takes a half-time team talk for Jason to sort them out. These guys should be now. We got good players, and they should be smart enough to say, right, this is what they're doing. Brooksy, come in the middle, help out in the in the middle of the park, get involved in the game, link up the game. We only saw little bits of interchange between Stan and Dom tonight, which was which was nice. He he should be taking responsibility, but but it's a bit they're of a not doing that. They're, they're really really. And, and you're you saying we haven't settled now. on a team. Yeah. yeah, well, it's a good Keith, point. Keith, do you it's not think point. that the, the other point that you make is simply de- down to the system? Because when when he's got. Uh, Lewis Cook, who's a designated six, and then Billings playing with him, or Goslin, or sometimes Stanislas has played in sentiment. Lerma's got that yeah. freedom to be able to go and press the more uh, deep line midfielders, or even sometimes the centre backs, um, 
for the opposition. But when he's playing in a two, is a double pivot in midfield. If he goes roaming away, I know we got the three centre halves behind uh, Lewis Cook. But often, you, if you in that system, we seem to uh, as soon as soon as Lewis Cook or Lewis, they go together sometimes, and then we they get both get caught ahead of the ball. And our transition defending um, is yeah. you, how many times we see it tonight. Our transition defending was just yeah. oh, we lost the ball. Okay, uh, our centre halves, wide centre halves, Kelly and Cook wide. Because we're on the attack. As soon as they turn over the ball, Lerma and Lewis Cook ahead of the ball. Where if you had three midfielders, you'd yeah. have Le- uh, Lewis Cook sitting. And what, it was tonight. It was one, one ball, one ball. Yeah, but that's all they had. One ball. Play for set pieces over the top and yeah. counter attack. That's that's obviously the players issue, but it's a system issue as well. Like because Lerma, if he he cannot from a double pivot go chasing and harrying the ball and leave Lewis Cook isolated on his own. Because no, otherwise, I agree. The, at, at, at the moment, the three-five-two, because we need to control the midfield a, a lot more than what we're doing, uh, seems three, to be three. the better formation. But but the the, the, the what, he's played a three-four-three, but Brooks should be far more mobile across the pitch. He should be looking to play fine space. Yeah. Uh, That's he's not. He, 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 he needs. Yeah. To, it's the system, but he has to take more responsibility himself. Like, I I say that like lightly because he is our, one of our best players, if not our, our best. Yeah. I'd say Dan Juma's our actual talent who can win a game on his own. But yeah. Brooks is probably technically one of our best players. So that's why I put a lot of emphasis on him because he's got the ability and we know he's got the ability. He has to do more. He has to affect games more. He's on the periphery of games. But I think the Lerma issue, I think Billing thrives. Uh, he's not the best player, don't get me wrong. He, he's very much Marmite. For probably the whole of yeah. the ball, he's, he's hot and cold, but he's better when he's got a free roam. He can play that number eight position. He can just drift off the front and then he can get the ball off. But like we can play four, three, three today. Can we not? All right, he wants three players back. He, it's clear he wants three players back when we lose the ball. That's why he's playing the three centre arse there. Can we not do that in a slightly different way? Can we not have two centre arse and one sitting midfielder to be that three to protect against the counter attack? Um, yeah. I My think concern that, with. My concern That's with four at the back is Simpson is not the most mobile of oh, defenders. That, I think he we would play the four at the back if Mepham was there at the moment in those types of games. I think three at the back is his preferred system. But I think in those games where the opposition are simply just going to sit there and uh, yeah, there's no need for a third centre back, especially if you're playing a sitting midfielder. There's you've then you've got four players behind the ball. You don't really need that. Not when they've committed like they got one striker up front and they've got. It. Ten, but basically nine players defending. Um, but I think Mepham needs to come back soon. Dan Juma is the one. Yeah, I think yeah. he's uh, Dan Juma is so important. Depend. I'd, I'd go as far to say is if Dan Juma doesn't come back soon and we keep drawing these games, it'll be the difference between us finishing second and getting automatic. So I don't believe we can win the win the league. I think it's um, that bad. I don't think it's that he's, bad. He's I just that, think he's, he's that pivotal. I think us. he's that important because I think he can win games on his own. I think if you've seen at the start of the season, he won games for us on his own and is exploding us. And he, he attracts players and, and that will open up space for the likes of yeah. Brooks and Stanislav. Yeah. And he's a goal threat. And when Solanke doesn't score, we need that other goal threat. And Junior stepped up to be fair to him, but he went off today. Is he how bad is that injury? I just think he's, I think they need to be honest and say like, how, he's going to be back fairly soon I think if he's fit he needs to play against Crawley uh, in the cup like he needs minutes um, I just think we need that explosiveness if we could sign another player then I don't think we will um, if we could let King go and sign another player I would do it because I think we do need something and King doesn't seem like his heart's in it I know he scored two on a weekend but I think we do need that injection because at the it's laboured. We're doing okay, and we're gonna. I do think we're gonna be in or there or thereabouts with say eight games to go. I don't. I don't doubt that. But it's whether we're gonna be good enough to finish second or whether we're gonna finish third or fourth. I can't see us finishing lower than fourth, but I think it's the difference. And like Norwich have got match winners. We've we're down a match winner at the moment. Yeah, it's uh, I tell you what, lots of conversations to be had. And uh, Junior tonight, yeah, he left on crutches and in a boot. So that's a bad one, isn't it? Yeah, Yeah, so that's that's not going to be great, is it? We will see what pans out. But yeah, um, thank you so much, guys. Really appreciate um, all the input today. Jamie, appreciate you coming on, mate. Cheers, Sam. Cheers, mate. Cheers, Uh, Cheers, Jamie. Once again, thank you very much. And Keith, also, pleasure to have you on. 
place is all mine, mate. Cheers. Thank you very much. Right. OK, so there we go. That's it. Before we go, um, a lot of people have been uh, clamouring for this guy. Um, would he be a good signing for AFC Bournemouth? Well, a lot of people are saying wages are an issue, but um, he's still training with us. Who knows what's going to happen there? Um, but anyway, in terms of the five word match reports, we asked for a load of them tonight and um, we're about to go through them now because, yeah, a lot of people have been left um, a little bit frustrated after tonight. And here's what you have had to say. Hopefully you can see them on your screen now. So, James, substitutes should be made earlier. Can't afford to drop points, says Boscombe St. John's lad. John Amos says, Lions show teeth for point. That they did, John. Agreed. Heather, exciting game despite the result. Minty, promoted teams win these games. Uh, Begovic got us a point, said Rich. Uh, Sean, just remember who they've beat. Baby Duck, Tyndall's negativity, gifts Lions share. Tired of playing five defenders, says Ross. And there we go. Tommy, boring, inaccurate, frustrating, predictable, shite. And it goes on and it goes on. If you want to have a look at that, then you can see all those tweets. Just go to AFCB podcast uh, on Twitter and then you can see all of those tweets. Right then, there we go. That is it for tonight. So what have I got to tell you about before I go? On the way, lockdown interviews. We've got two coming up in the next few weeks One of them could be explosive and one of them a nice little trip down the 90s memory lane. Also, if you want to win a Cherries print, we're going to be closing this competition soon. Just go to that address at the bottom there. We've got a video on our YouTube channel, free to enter, and the print could be yours. All the details are on that link. Plus, if you want to support us, you can buy us a coffee. Just go to afcbpodcast.com forward slash coffee really appreciate everyone's input today my throat is nearly going so i'm going to take a much needed break tom's going to be back with the player ratings craig beasley has got another celeb ahead of luton plus an efl tier list with tom you might have seen it at the weekend if you haven't you'll get another chance to see how me and tom jordan think the table's going to pan out interesting see ya oh,